Hey everybody, how you doing today? Um, I'm actually going to be working on a couple things today. It's going to be, uh, I got to do an oil change on my 94 Chevy pickup. So, I need to clean up some of this mess so I can get this truck in the garage so I can jack it up on a flat surface because uh, the driveway is pretty steep incline. And I don't feel comfortable getting up underneath something jacked up when it's on a hill. It's not really a safe thing to do uh, with jack stands and stuff like that. Uh, even though I can fit up under there, the truck's high enough to fit up under there, but getting the drain pan and all that stuff up under there and moving around, it's aggravating. And plus greasing the grease fittings uh, on the whole truck. It's nice to have the front wheels off the ground so I can turn the wheel in, in one place without starting it up every time. But uh, here we go. I'm going to get it in the, in the garage after I move some of the stuff out of the way. So I'm going to try to get this all straightened up a little bit so I have enough room. Alright everybody, I think I got everything somewhat straightened up so I can get in here the right way. All right, y'all, I'm back. It's kind of tough to see up in here, but uh, I'm trying to do the best I can with the camera. And the, and the tripod, I'm on a little tripod. Let's see. The oil filter. Uh, the oil filter's up above the drive shaft up there. I'll try to get it down with my uh, oil, fil oil filter uh, pliers. Sounds like a big pair of channel locks. Ugh. Put these gloves on. These rubber gloves work good doing this kind of stuff. It gives you good grip on grabbing something to untwist it. Uh, and if you get your hands full of grease, all you do is just slip them off and put a new pair on. Which I ain't afraid to get greasy, but I mean, it's, it keeps everything cleaner. Way cleaner. 
Good job. Oh, there we go. There we go. She's fixing to drop some oil. Let's see here. Here she comes. Alright, there we go. It's starting to drip oil. It's able, I'm going to be able to turn it by the hand. Makes a mess. I don't know why they did stuff like this. I'm a Chevrolet person, but dang, I don't know why they put stuff in the way of everything else. Even back in the old days. I mean, granted, this truck is way easier to work on than a lot of the trucks nowadays. Just for the space-wise, they have more space to work on. This is a 5.7 liter, 350. That's in this truck. Let's see here. Uh, get up in there and dry that off. And you also, it's a good idea to check to see if the O-ring came off with the oil filter, because if it didn't, and you go try to put your new oil filter back on. It never happened to me, but uh, I've known people that would it happened to, and <laughs> they started the vehicle up and it blew oil everywhere. But uh, just a word of advice: just make sure the O-ring's off of there, and make sure your new one has an O-ring on it. But uh. I always put a little bit of oil around my O-ring. Get some of the old oil and just rub it around there. It's a good thing to do. Makes a good seal. It makes it so it doesn't lock on there. It's not as... Uh, let's see here. dry all this oil up here so it don't drip everywhere. It gets all up in this area. I mean it ain't gonna hurt it. If anything it's good for this area to get oil on it, but it just makes it a mess. Especially when you're done. You don't want it dripping all over the driveway and stuff. Uh, try to get it as clean as possible and then after that make sure this oil filter is somewhat snug on there And just to let you all know, this truck does have like 660,000 miles on it, on the original motor. But, uh, the only thing uh, I've had to do to it is do oil changes, put new batteries in it, alternator and, and stuff. It sounds kind of crazy, but uh, it is still the original and stock. Um, oh, let's see here. What the heck am I, what's the word I'm looking for? 
head gasket. <laughs> Original and stock head gaskets on this sucker. I did do a time and chain on it. I mean, granted, I probably didn't have to do it because when I took it apart, you know, um, it, it was still good, actually. But while I had it apart, I put a new one in there. Uh, you'd be shocked. You, you Really, you'd be shocked. I mean, there's a little bit of oil that's wet down here along the bottom of the truck. I just wipe it off and clean it off when, I, when I'm doing an oil change, but it's, it's, to this day, I'm still shocked, uh, but, they say General Motors gives you a brand new vehicle if you reach a million miles, that's what they say, and that's what I've heard, but, We'll see what that happens, but I'll tell you right now, I probably wouldn't even want the new vehicle just just because of the luck I have with this one. Uh, and the newer vehicles ain't built as tough. So, and if they did give you a new vehicle, they would want your old one. They would want to take this one for nothing. This truck is supposed to take a 1030 uh, for as many miles as on it and how wore in the motor is. I'm granted it still has a lot of power for what it is. Um, I use a 2050 in it and I've always used a 2050 in it. Uh, after it got to be so many miles on it. Because, uh, of course, there ain't no more warranty on the truck, so I really don't have to follow the specifications. And plus, it gets real hot here, and uh, it's pretty warm where we're at um, all year round, so it ain't really hurting nothing. I want y'all to tell me uh, what you think about this, because uh, <clears throat> that's, the, that's the oil I run in it. Let me get that thing to stay there a minute. I used to run, you know, high mileage. You know, I had I used to run full synthetic in it, and years ago. And spent all that extra money for that and all that stuff. <clears throat> and now, I mean, I'll be honest with you, for the past eight, nine years, I've been running this Walmart brand. It's only like 11 or, well, the price went up a little bit, <laughs> as everybody knows on this stuff, but, uh. And you all know the reason for that. But anyway, um, it's only $13 for uh, five quarts. And the truck holds five quarts. Um, so, I, and I had good luck with it. I'm not getting paid to say this or anything from Walmart, but... Uh, Sometimes I wish I would. I wish I was getting paid to say this kind of stuff, but uh, but that's the oil I use, the Walmart brand. 
Now granted, I change my oil about every 3,000 miles. The most I ever let it go was probably 3,500 miles. But uh, average 3,000 miles, I do oil change. And I grease all the grease fittings up. But, um, uh, well, I'll get back to you. Let me get back to you in a minute so I can get all this stuff out of here and start her up. Well, I'm back, guys. Um, I did finish all the grease fittings. I didn't uh, tape it, but because um, it, it's like impossible, some of them to get to, and you need two people. So my wife helped me. Why I put it on the grease fitting? She was pumping the grease gun, and that's mainly in the front part. <clears throat> but uh, there is like 13 of them up front uh, on the front part of the truck. And then I got them on all the U joints on the drive shafts. Uh, so that's uh, two, four, five, six. There's six of them on the drive shafts. Um, one at each U joint. And then I got on the slip yoke uh, coming off the carrier bearing in the rear. There's one. And up. The light might got me there a little bit. And then I do have uh, on the four wheel drive shaft. <clears throat> um, I do have a few on that one too. Um, but I did get it all complete. And you, I could show you how tight of a squeeze it is up under there. I mean, it would be great to have it on a lift, but that's the lower ball joint on the passenger side. And the upper ball joint and the tie rod ends. <clears throat> but I got them all, I got them all handled. And there is a trick of doing it. There is the, a trick to doing it because uh, you need to have the wheels turned a little bit so you can get your hands in there the right way. Uh, the way I got it set up for my lower ball joints. Uh, I have to turn my wheels all the way to the right so I can get the back of the lower on the driver's side and the front of the lower on the passenger side. And then you have to, I have to bring it back about a half of a turn so I can get my arms up between the front cross member <clears throat> and get up there by the idle arm and pitman arm uh, to reach them well. But it's an aggravating pain in the butt if you have big hands and a halfway decent sized forearm. You can, it's hard as anything to get up in there, but I, I'm able to get up in there. I just can't pump the grease gun um, because I can't move after I get into that position. But uh, other than that, the truck is pretty much complete for today. I did top off all my fluids, uh, window washer fluid, and check my antifreeze. Um, everything looks good. <clears throat> my air filter is good. Um, my brake fluid's good, which I did put new brake lines in a prior video. We'll link that below in a prior video, but I, um, I did, I believe it's on video. I believe we YouTube it. I don't know if we did or not, but I did put a, if not, then you won't see the link, but if, if we did do it, I'll, I'll link it. Have a good one.